X, 31, and I, 32, had C, 16, way too young. We're friendly co-parents. One big rule we share is if our daughter breaks something, she pays for it. Now, sis, 27, and I are the only grandkids. Aunt never married. Instead, she worked with grandma and grandpa at their seamster store and took it over when they retired. Sis's girlfriend, 29, proposed last year. Grandpa offered to make future sis-in-law a custom suit, which she was over the moon about. Grandma had me ask sis what her dream dress was and record the combo. Sis, thinking it was just between us, told me in great detail what her dream dress was, though said it was way too expensive, so she would get something much cheaper. Well, a few months later grandma surprised sis with her dream wedding dress. It fit perfectly and everyone cried. Sadly, grandma recently passed away, which hit us all hard. Sis was devastated, but decided that the dress meant grandma would still be there with us at the wedding. The issue comes in with C. She's very large, much larger than Sis. Three days ago, we decided to go visit Sis and see how she was doing. It was great, but then C asked if she could try on the dress. Sis politely said no. C made a face, but dropped it. Later, we decided to go grab dinner. Sis and I went to pick up our orders, but C decided to stay and play with Sis's dog. We got back, and the dress was destroyed. C had apparently tried to get it on, popping some seams, and got stuck. Instead of waiting for help, she cut her way out. The dress was hacked to bits. Sis was devastated and asked us to leave. I grounded C and called Aunt with some pictures, asking if it could be saved. She said there was no. She said she'd make a new one, but it wasn't the same. Then she dropped the bomb on me, grandma had hand sewed most of the dress, used super expensive fabric, and put almost 500 hours in making that dress, since it was the only family wedding we'd have. In total, the dress cost $12,000, give or take. C has about $15,000 saved from various jobs, as well as winning writing competitions. This was supposed to help her in college. I took her to the bank and set in motion transferring all the funds, since as her parent, I still have control over it. 12k dollars to aunt to pay for the new dress. 3k dollars to my sister's wedding, as an emotional distress tax. I explained exactly why this was happening to C, but she sobbed the entire time, asking what was she supposed to do for college, and saying it wasn't her fault. I told her she could get a job if she didn't get a scholarship, and it was her fault for trying on the dress after she'd been told no, and for not waiting until we got back. A few popped seams could have been fixed. Hacking the dress to pieces couldn't. C told my ex, and while she agreed C was in the wrong after the full story, said I shouldn't have ruined her future for a free dress. I reminded her of our rule, and she still thinks I'm wrong. So, am I the idiot here? Not the idiot, absolutely not she ruined her own future. In my mind, that dress wasn't 12 or even $15,000, it was priceless. It could have and should have been passed down for generations. I'm horrified your daughter did such a thing. Most kids don't go to college with savings, so she's just going to have to tough it out. I hope she looks back one day and realizes the payment she made was severely short. I am so sorry this has happened to your family. Not the idiot, your daughter is old enough to know what she did was wrong. I think that you were right to give your sister the 12k for the dress. Your daughter can continue to work as she has time left before college, and she can also apply to scholarships, get loans or work while in college. I disagree with you giving your sister 3k from your kid's account thought. I think you should give the 3k back to your daughter and tell your sister the 3k is from you. Did your daughter know the significance of the dress? Not the idiot. I'm on the fence about the punishment as that is a lot of money, however, would that even be a question if it wasn't family that made the dress and sis would have to pay 15k dollars for a new dress from a shop? Probably not. I'm very confused as to why your 16 year old would even act in this way. Is it a habit? Does she have a history? Trying the dress on, I can see a teen doing that. It ripped. Bad but not the end of the world. Completely cutting it open, however. That's insane. So background info, I dated the same girl since I was a senior in high school to my second year of university. We both same age. We broke up plenty of times and got back together, but she officially broke up with me for the last time in my second year of uni. It's been two years since then, and I'm in fourth year. I still care about her dearly to be deathly honest, and she knows it. 
She has made countless YouTube videos with her friends talking ab embarrassing things about our relationship, but giving me an alias so that people don't know who she's talking about, or has made these cryptic tweets about me that I can clearly tell is about me, but when I message her to take it down or delete it, she says it has nothing to do with me, I'm acting like a weirdo, and that I need to leave her alone. Honestly, for a while, I thought maybe I was just going crazy or just blinded by the fact that I still care about her and that she really isn't thinking about me, and it's just my own self-pity that is making me think that she doing these things to get a rise out of me. I told my friends about this and told me that people are starting to read it as if I'm not over her and that I'm deluded and it's starting to get stalkerish. I listened to their advice because it's depressing enough as it is and tried to move on with my life. A year went by and one day my sister told me that she had gotten a follow request on Instagram from my ex. I left it alone and didn't make a big deal of it. Probably at like 3am I got two notifications that said I had got a message from her and she had tagged me and my sister in her recent post. I was stoned as hell and I literally thought I was dreaming, so I closed my phone and went to bed. I checked my phone the next morning and the notif was still there, so I screenshotted it and clicked on it for evidence, just in case, I told myself. I clicked on notif, but she must have deleted it because it sent me to the Instagram equivalent of like a 404 error page. I asked her why she tagged me and my sister and she went off on me, telling me that it's been two years since we broke up and that I've become a stalker or something to that degree. She posted our convo on her Twitter and cut out my name, she made a bunch of tweets like seriously. You need to leave me alone. And crap like that. I was getting messages from mutual friends that I'm losing my goddamn mind and need to see a therapist. That was the last straw for me. I posted the SS of the notifications, took SS of every cryptic tweet I felt was about me, and explained why, and I called her a pose because she knows exactly what the hell she's doing, and it's goddamn evil. I was very satisfied with myself because it seems that a lot of people are a lot more understanding of me, but there are a lot of people who are. Also, tell me what I did was extremely mean and out of spite. I don't know, she honestly made me feel like a freaking psychopath, and it just feels like this was the right thing to do, am I the idiot? Nope not the idiot. She was enjoying tormenting you and then having others think you were psycho. You proved what she was doing and she deserved it. She was trying to humiliate you and make you the joke. You smartly saved what she did and had proof that she was not so innocent, had been gaslighting you for her own sick fun. I would seek counseling because the person you thought she was is cruel and insensitive. You need to get over her and counseling will help you deal with her betrayal. You aren't including a huge amount of important information like why you broke up and what proof you have that you're not a total psycho obsessed with tweets that actually have nothing to do with you. Maybe it was a freaking accident. You sound like a total whack job dude. Just in case, I told myself is insane and I don't really believe you didn't check that tagged photo immediately. You need to block this chick and force her completely out of your mind because you are going to look like the idiot no matter what you do and not a regular idiot but a scary one. Not the idiot. Please block her on social media so she can't do this. Don't ask friends to join you though, but if they try and share stuff she does with you, like YouTube videos, etc. politely ask them not to. You can't control what she says. Let them know that getting involved in her drama is not good for you and will only give her more ammunition. You can only control what you do, not what she does. She sounds like a narcissist, stay well clear. Heal. You deserve someone who loves and respects you even when you don't do what they want or dance to their tune. My husband and I have been married for two years together for five. He's been in my daughter's life since she was five, and they honestly have a great relationship. My relationship with my ex was not great. We weren't together for long before our daughter was born, and he wasn't all that interested in being a father when she arrived. He didn't fight for custody and had no problem only seeing her every other weekend when she was born, and even then he was pretty inconsistent. My current husband is a trainer, he teaches intermediate and advanced boxing and kickboxing courses. He's been doing martial arts since he was 6 years old and even trained some professional fighters. When lockdown started earlier this year we could tell that my daughter was going a little stir crazy. She's very high energy loves running around and playing. She's never expressed any interest in martial arts before, but we have a pretty substantial home gym, so we asked her if she wanted to try exercising with him. Since then she's really taken a liking to it. 
My husband even ordered her his own pair of gloves. She seems to really be getting into it and asks to participate whenever he's working out. She's not taking any hits at all. She's doing all the hitting, they mostly just work on her technique by hitting pads and these things that look like soft ping pong paddles. She's been getting really into it and has been talking a lot about boxing wanting to watch old matches with her stepdad. The issue is with my ex. He's been starting arguments that it's dangerous and that a little girl shouldn't be learning how to fight. He's been increasingly vocal about his complaints. It all recently blew up when he threatened legal action and wanted to change the custody arrangement if we let our daughter continue to participate in a dangerous activity. I basically told him off and said it's no different than her being on a soccer team. I also told him off on the legal threat, I know for a fact that he can't afford a lawyer right now and he has only really interacted with my daughter over video chat this year and even before then, he'd rarely put an effort to see her. I felt good about my choice until his family started reaching out to me about my decision. His family reached out and agreed it was dangerous, his sister also tried telling us off about it. I was still adamant about letting my daughter continue with it until my extended family started reaching out to me about it, also saying it's too dangerous for a child. It's been weighing on me since I really do trust my family's opinions. My husband says that it's perfectly safe and that he's been training people for years. I don't personally have any experience with martial arts, so I feel like I need an outside opinion. Am I the idiot for continuing to let my daughter box with her stepdad? Not the idiot, self-defense is important for anyone, and your SO with his experience should know plenty about training children without having them overwork their development. As in gaining a ton of muscle on a developing frame etc. Any gender at any age should learn more about self-defense, and the exercise involved will be great for them in understanding how to operate their meat suits the best way I can put it. There are child psychology case studies you can look into on the benefits of sports and development. Absolutely not the idiot. Your daughter found a sport she likes and she has the opportunity to practice it safely and it will be a great way for her to bond with her stepfather. It's a win-win-win. Also, fun fact, the average girl that age isn't any weaker than the average boy. There's no reason why a girl shouldn't be allowed to learn a martial art as long as it's taught in a safe and age-appropriate way. In fact, having a way to defend herself may make her safer in the long run. Not the idiot. Oh my lord. Plenty of kids that age start learning a martial art, it's a great way to get exercise. There's also nothing dangerous or inappropriate about the way your husband is teaching her. Honestly, it sounds like a fantastic way for them to bond and she gets the benefit of starting learning self-defense. I think your family and your ex's family are getting stuck in traditional ideas of what women and girls should be doing rather than what's actually good for your daughter. I live in hell an apartment building and my neighbor from the apartment under me is an incredibly bored and annoying lady. She complains to me on average once a day. She looks out her window to see when I'll come home and she'll come up to my apartment and complain about something. By the way, I'm 34 and I live with my partner. She's around 60 and lives with her husband. The sort of complaints she has are, you were too loud last night and this morning, your TV was too loud, you moved the furniture too loud, you showered too loud, your air conditioning is too loud, we could hear you had people over, we hear your music, we hear you talking, your cat meows all day long, the water you used for your plants dripped on our balcony, the smells of cooking from your apartment are too strong, we can smell cigarette when you smoke on your balcony, and so on and so forth. I'm not even going to go into the fact that we have three cats that don't meow much, we have cameras, that we have succulents that we don't water as often as she complains about water dripping and that neither of us smokes. The fact is this woman is driving us crazy. For several years now, we would listen to her complaints, apologize and try to keep it down, but a few weeks ago we had some repair work done at our apartment so, while my boyfriend was doing the work, I went down there to ask them for some patience and understanding. To my surprise, horror. I could hear extremely muffled sounds in their apartment. Almost nothing. And he was literally hammering and drilling crap upstairs. I asked him if he was going easy with the hammer and drill, he said no, that it was super loud. So the conclusion was, they can't hear crap. We've been walking on freaking tiptoe for fear of disturbing this poor old couple, I listen to music so quietly, I can't even hear it. So we decided to stop living like church mice and behave normally and to ignore them completely. Now when she calls after me, I just keep walking. 
when she knocks on my door, I don't answer. Same with her husband. And my boyfriend does the same. Last week, she knocked on my door for a straight 10 minutes, shouting I know you're in there and would only leave when my next door neighbor told her to get the hell out or they'll call the police. Yesterday, she waited until 6 p.m. which is when I come home after work and started shouting from her window at me. There's a kid's playground in front of our building and everyone could hear her screaming. This is where I start to feel kind of bad. She's becoming a nuisance to other people only because we're ignoring her. I don't know what to do. I want to keep ignoring her. But it feels crappy to put other people through this. Not the idiot, but also maybe explain to her that you noticed that you couldn't really hear anything when you were there and that you will no longer be able to make time in your day for her complaints. If she keeps it up you can and should report her to your landlord. The fact that they haven't been brought in on this after years of it is crazy to me. I would explain the whole mess to them so they're aware and see if any other neighbors would be able to back you up. Not the idiot. I would start documenting her harassment now, even recording her yelling through the door if you can. This will help to cover you if she tries to escalate things and complain about you to the landlord or the police. It sounds like your neighbor could also back up that she is crazy and you haven't been too loud. I've had several cookie board retired neighbors in my time in New York. Their nosiness can be annoying, but they are the first to complain to the landlord or the city when something is wrong with a building, which I appreciate. Not the idiot, but what the hell are you doing not reporting this to the property management? I've had two different friends who had similar, although not nearly as extreme, problems like this, and they reported the person, and the situations were resolved either by management telling the people that they need to stop complaining about normal reasonable noise levels, or by management offering my friend a different apartment. People need to get with the freaking program.